This is an arc fault circuit interrupter or AFCI breaker. I set up a little test jig here to show you how it works. Basically below this uh, breaker that's set up to be powered from a GFCI breaker for safety, there's a little 800 watt heater. So you get about six amps of load. Uh, I can turn it on and then we can create arcs that will be the type that you might see um, in a circuit. So to understand what they're supposed to do, we, we'd have to get the standard, this UL1699 uh, standard, but it's like, you know, you can see here, they wanna show you like a thousand bucks. Um, there's a European version, so this 62606 standard, same sort of deal, they have these super expensive standards. Um, as a little hint, so if you're ever doing any standards like this, uh, if you go to other European countries, in this case, the Slovenian Institute of Standardization, um, they have this great service that lets you buy them A, they're cheaper, B, they have a rental. So if we pick our standard to understand what these breakers are supposed to do, uh, we can get an e-library. And so the e-library has a PDF in a browser window. Hint, hint, maybe you can find a way to download it. Uh, but even then, you can just kind of use it in the reader. Um, to view it. So if we pull over the um, this IEC standard, what we can understand now is that there's basically this thing. So if we have a six amp circuit, um, there's a table that will show us how quickly the breaker should interrupt if there was an arc. So, th so there's different, I'm not going to go through all this, sorry, arc fault stuff, but there's basically series or parallel arcs. So series arcs would be in the circuit. Um, and I think they're kind of pretty interesting to demonstrate. And you can see here, so there's two, two limits for 230 or 120 volts. Um, I'm on 120, so I should use the bottom table, but either way. Uh, you can see it has to break within like, you know, half a second or, or a little less um, than that for our 6 amp sort of thing. So that's what we expect it to do. Um, and we're going to look at that in a second when we see how, you know, how they actually work. So um, to see how they're actually working, what I have is a current probe here that's in series, um, you know, or in the, the hot lead. Um, so we set up the current probe, we'll record that waveform, and I'll again create an arc. And I'm just going to create an arc with this loose connection here. Um, and so I kind of move the loose connection around. And there you can see some arcing it trips. And if we go back to the, the, um, the waveform, um, so normally it's a resistive load. It's just a heater. So what we see is a nice sine wave. This is the current, remember? So you see a nice sine wave for the resistive load. Where it's arcing right before it, it drops, you see these little discontinuities. Um, and so this is actually because, um, you know, there's some voltage that it's got to flash over there. Um, there's these little discontinuities. Um, so if you looked at this in the frequency domain, you should see some, you know, potentially more obvious high frequency components. You can see another discontinuity here. Um, I'm guessing I just like jiggled it, right? And, and, and that's when it went from arcing to direct contact or something. So you can see all these, um, these different frequency components is how it's actually detecting it. And, and in this case, you can actually see, for example, um, this Eaton breaker, there's, what is this, like, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven-ish um, cycles before it broke. So uh, we're well under, you know, at 60 hertz here, well under that that one second. Um, here's a Siemens breaker. So the last one was an Eaton breaker. Um, I also had a Siemens arc fault breaker just out of interest to, to compare. So we'll do the same thing. Have a current probe on the hot lead and we go ahead and sort of try to make it um, try to make it trip. So you can see I'm just sort of moving around with a loose lead there. Um, it trips. And if we go back to, to the waveform it captured, um, here we go. Very similar. So right, you can see once the arc install starts, you can see that that peak current's actually a little lower. Um, but more importantly, we have these discontinuities. So I didn't do an extensive test here. You can see it actually took a couple more cycles. We're still way below the, the you know, the limit in the standard. So that's not an issue. Um, and maybe this is just like, you know, the, the arcing was a tiny bit different. I don't know, but um, you can see it's a very similar looking waveform and a pretty similar trip. 
between the Siemens and that, that Eden breaker. Um, so the other thing that might be kind of interesting too is we can also look at what would like a crazy arc look like. So if I take the, the neutral out there and using an insulated file, um, I can actually generate a ton of, you know, what you would expect probably to, to trip this thing because it looks like a lot of arcing. Um, but you'll notice it's not tripping, right? So that's the, the arc fault breaker is in the circuit there and it is not tripping at all. Um, and so, yeah, why, why this happens is it makes more sense when you take a look at the current waveform I've recorded during this. Okay, so here's the current waveform. Um, and obviously it's only when the, the file's making contact there's anything. But if you look at the arcing, it's actually not very frequent. So you can see it's only ever so often you get cycles with that obvious arcing in it. Um, so as I'm bringing the file across, there's a, an arc, but then there's a period of regular contact. Um, so because there's no continuous arcing, is it seems to be what it's looking for, right, is multiple cycles with that arcing in it. Um, the other thing that's, so there's this kind of p interesting paper, I'll, I'll link below combination AFCIs. Um, the, I'm not positive everything in here is accurate or maybe things change, but because it talks about not actually having series arcing, which you can see from my demonstration, I'm only doing series arcing here. And you can see it's in fact completely tripping on my series arcing test. Um, so yeah, so I'm not positive about that. But the interesting thing that this paper um, does mention is this, this hot terminal problem, which is also mentioned in the standard. And basically... Um, you know, when the, doing the terminal, like I did, where you have an arc, that arc is pretty hot. Um, and I'm, it seems that, you know, if you get it just right, you can actually here you can see this wire glowing. Um, you can actually get this thing to, to start cooking pretty heavily. And so far, um, in one of the demos here, it, you know, it actually shows it catching fire because it gets hot enough. So we can recreate that. So I have an insulated screwdriver here. Um, I adjust the terminal and kind of move it around until you actually get just a continuous arc. Um, and in a thermal camera here, I, I didn't let it run very long, but you can see it's getting like 80 degrees pretty quickly. Um, and the sort of interesting thing is that if you take a screwdriver and uh, move it around, you'll see that adjust. So here I loosened it a tiny bit more um, just to see, you know, how does that impact it? So you'll see the temperature actually drops a little bit here. Um, if you tighten it all the way up, like I do here, you'll see the temperature drops out. So this will get rid of, obviously the arcing, this would be now like a, a correct install. Um, so the, the wire is tightly in there and you can see the temperature is now like 50 and dropping, um, as it goes. So, and if we loosen it back up, we will actually see the temperature start rising again. So, um, you know, when it comes to installation problems that potentially arc fault breakers could detect, this is kind of interesting because it shows that, you know, if you have loose terminals, it could cause arcing, um, which definitely will cause heating. Um, and hopefully it's something that an arc fault breaker, you know, could actually pick up on uh, if you had this, this issue in your house. Yeah, so there you can see the temperature rising again after I loosen the terminal. All right, so that's it. That's kind of like, a, you know, there's there's sort of an example of that that series arcing that I was talking about with that heat. So, um, you know, hopefully this convinced you that these arc fault breakers actually do do something. Um, and you can, you can kind of, you know, carefully recreate some of these experiments too. Um, and you can see from the current waveforms that it's not just any arcing, you know, for one cycle. So the other thing is if you just try to, you know, touch wires together to create an arc, um, that might not give you what you expect. Might not, might not actually trip the arc fault uh, breaker, but a more continuous arc like this um, should trip the breaker and yeah, work roughly as you expect.